example, the Congolese people first and foremost to be worthy of their own culture. He had faith in them. We want to be independent, he said, but on terms of equality and respect. I think that's why people always said he was intransigent. Are you a communist, Mr. Lumumba? It always makes me laugh when I'm asked that question. I'm not a communist at all. You know, I've often been presented as a communist, as anti-white, anti-Belgian, as someone destructive. Absolutely not. I'm simply a nationalist leader fighting for an ideal. I'm not a communist at all. I never will be. American agent Larry Devlin received $100,000 from the CIA along with instructions to make the elimination of Lumumba the priority goal of his covert action. Yes, I received a cable that uh, someone whom I would, a senior officer that I would know by sight, would arrive and give me specific instructions. Uh, and that, that was very surprising because why were they sending someone there to give me instructions when they could send them by cable? I had no idea what the instructions would be. In Belgian Secret Service telegrams, there was talk of a mysterious Operation Barracuda and of the imminent arrival of two children. I must say quite sincerely that I have no recollection of the code name Barracuda at all. And the two children, what was that? The two children? No. Yes, yes, I remember now. They sent two people, an aide and Major Lutz. They sent both of them. Yes, it must have been those two, to talk to me about the Lumumba affair, and they were in favor of eliminating him. I remember being totally surprised when he instructed me that they wanted to get rid of but I, I, I'd never heard of, our, of the agency being involved in such a thing before. They wanted to send me a crocodile killer to get rid of Lumumba. That's what they came to propose. The substance to, to eliminate Lumumba was toothpaste that was poisoned, which would result in a illness very similar to polio or something like that as I remember. I never opposed it. I always let them get on with things. But I let the Congolese do it. I think there were lots of people who preferred him out of the way for good. It's been denied that President Eisenhower issued such instructions. I have no idea whether he did or did not. At the time, I assumed that he had. And I, I, I have a feeling that something must have been said that was either he ordered it or he was misunderstood. But certainly, I, under, I believed it at the time, that it was pre a presidential order. The red flag came down when the Congolese army in Leopoldville overthrew the ultra-nationalist Prime Minister Patrice Lumumba and expelled Moscow's diplomatic representative from the country. With Soviet documents, fly sheets and propaganda brochures burned, communist intrigues against the United Nations in the Congo have for the time being been stopped. A 30-year-old colonel, Desiree Mobutu, has become the new strongman of this young republic with the support of the majority of the Congolese army. Mobutu had in fact been a trusted ally of Lumumba, who had appointed him head of the army only a few weeks earlier. He now declared he had deposed the prime minister. The officer who led the push was in fact the West's secret weapon against Lumumba. One of his most influential advisors was the Belgian counter-espionage officer, Colonel Malier. Mobutu was pro-Western, that's for sure. But apart from that, he was also manipulated by the Americans. He was interested in dealing with the United States and having American support. And I was the, the person with whom he worked. 
Mobutu's putsch was the prelude to a dictatorship lasting more than 30 years from which the country has never recovered. But Mobutu didn't do it on his own. He was helped. They came to take this country's wealth. They came to get contracts with him so they could fill their pockets and to get bigger and bigger royalties. They supported him for more than 30 years. The Americans, the Belgians, the French, and the big international companies. They didn't come to develop the country, they came to make a profit. And they made huge profits. Mobutu's move against Lumumba was not only supported by Western secret services, but also by the United Nations. It was a million dollars, roughly, uh, which was UN money, which was used to pay the troops. Using troops paid by foreign powers, Mobutu put Lumumba under house arrest. UN forces also surrounded the residence of the deposed Prime Minister to protect him, but also to eliminate him politically. Lumumba broke the siege and tried to take his family on the 2,000 kilometer drive to Stanleyville, where a pro-Lumumba counter-government had been formed. But his very popularity was to become his undoing. We understood it was to be like a normal official trip, so we mobilized the population in the usual way. He made a speech in every village. Even in those villages which didn't support him, he would make speeches. He was caught in a trap of his own making. He wanted to win people over and he was quite capable of doing so. But this dragged out the journey and they were able to catch up with him and put him in prison. Late in the evening of the 1st of December 1960, Lumumba crossed the Sankuru River by boat and appeared to have reached safety. But the ferry boat bringing his family also brought his pursuers.